In this video, I will show you how to predict the effect of system resistance on centrifugal compressor performance and how to determine the compressor operating point in terms of head and volume flow as a function of system resistance. To do that, I will use the following process example. This is a simplified scheme of a polyethylene gas phase process. The process typically comprises of a fluidized bed reactor, a centrifugal compressor, a cooler, and a control valve. The fluidized bed reactor contains a bed of polyethylene resin. This bed is numerically lifted or fluidized as depicted here by means of a cycle gas flow from the compressor. The catalyst and hydrocarbon raw materials are introduced to the reactor where the polymerization takes place. This polymerization reaction is highly exothermic. This is the reason why this process is equipped with a cooler to cool down the cycle gas flow and remove heat from the reactor. Notice that the control valve is placed at the compressor outlet. It serves as a discharge throttling device for compressor capacity control. Now, in our case, we have the compressor performance curve as provided by the manufacturer for rated inlet conditions. It takes the form polytropic head versus inlet volume flow. Since the compressor operates at a constant rotational speed, then the head produced by the impeller for a given inlet volume flow is a constant, regardless of the inlet conditions. This statement will form the basis upon which we can derive the procedure accounting for the effect of system resistance. Now, for our process, let's suppose that the red curve that you can see here represents the system resistance. In this case, the operating point is defined as the equilibrium condition that exists between the head produced by the compressor and the head required by the process system. It is determined by the intersection of the compressor curve and system resistance curve as depicted here. Now, an important point to remember is that the system resistance curve can change and will certainly do. For example, throttling the discharge valve to 70% will increase the system resistance, which will result in a steeper curve, as highlighted here. Now, as the operating point is defined as the equilibrium condition that exists between the head produced by the compressor and the head required by the process system, then as you can see here, the operating point will move on the compressor curve to the left side, resulting in reduced volume flow and higher head output. If the control valve is further throttled, let's say to 50%, then the operating point will move further to the left side, closer and closer to the surge limit. Now, recall, system resistance can be defined as the sum of piping losses, system losses, and utility pressure drops. In our case, the last term is not applicable. Therefore, for our process, system resistance comprises only of piping and system losses. Let's have a closer look at each term. Piping losses account for the frictional losses or pressure drops due to pipes, fittings, valves, and instrumentations such as the Venturi flow meter that you can see here. In this table, I have listed all the components making up the piping system with their corresponding resistance coefficient. In this example, the total piping resistance coefficient when the control valve is fully open, is 8.6. This coefficient will be used in the head loss formula, as seen here. In this formula, K 
is the resistance coefficient, which is dependent on the control valve opening. It increases with reduced valve opening, resulting in increased head loss and system resistance. Q is the inlet volume flow. Notice how the head loss is proportional to the square of the flow. When the flow increases, the head loss increases too. D is the piping system internal diameter, which is in our case a constant. Now, in addition to the piping losses, we need to account for the system losses. These include the cooler head loss and the reactor head loss, which are described by the following two correlations. Notice how both of them are volume flow and gas density dependent. In addition, the reactor head loss is also sensitive to the bed weight, referred to here as BW. This actually makes sense, because a heavier bed will oppose higher resistance to the compressor flow. So, to sum up, the system resistance in our example is the sum of the piping, the reactor, and the cooler head losses. Now, the way these correlations were derived is beyond the scope of this course. However, if you want to learn more about how to calculate system resistance and get access to various hydraulic charts and diagrams, then we strongly encourage you to check out our bestseller course, Flow of Fluids Through Piping Systems, Fittings and Valves. We also encourage you to have a look at our Flow of Fluids Excel Workbook. This is...